Alhamdulillah <laughs> Sahabat tabi'in ridwanullah ta'ala alaihi majma'in Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun Itakullah ta'ala Wa tu inna Allah hamal lazina kal lazina hum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil amdiya mursalin Sayyidina maulana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah Who has created the heavens and the earth And all that is between them all praises are due to Allah who has sent his prophets to make his orders known to mankind. All praises are due to Allah who sent the master of the prophets, Sayyidina Muhammad as the giver of glad tidings and the warner. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of creation, the master of the first and the last, the beloved of the Lord of the two Easts and the two Wests, the Imam of the two sanctuaries, the grandfather of Hassan and Hussein, Sayyidina Muhammad wassalam, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar al Farooq, Hazrat Usman al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. O believers, welcome to you on the last Juma of the month of Muharram. Welcome to you as you are preparing to enter into the month of Safar. We are asking our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for protection from the heaviness of this month and to let us reach safely to the month of the Habib, to Rabiul Awal. O believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established the ruling of Islam in the Quran i Karim. In Surah An-Nisa saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Obey Allah, obey the Prophet, and obey your rightly guided leaders. Sadaqallahul Azim. Who is a rightly guided leader? Presidents and prime ministers who gain their power through bribery and corruption? The rightly guided leaders are those who are in obedience to Allah and His Prophet. 
The rightly guided leaders are those who tell us to live for Allah and His Prophet who call from dunya to ahirat. The rightly guided leaders are those who remind mankind of the orders of Allah. And this is how Muslims live for 1400 years. But today Muslims have lost our minds. Muslims who have lost our minds to say we don't need this ayat. We don't need anybody. We can choose our own leaders. We can make our own ruling system. Just like Nimrud, we are saying to Allah's ruling is the skies. To the ruling of this earth, it is ours. There are only two kinds of ruling systems. Either it is a ruling of Allah or it is a ruling of Taghuts, the ruling of evil ones. These are the only two categories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed His orders in the Holy Quran. And the protocol that has been established by divine law is that the orders of Allah are shown and established through the prophets and through their inheritors. That is how the ruling system of Allah has always been established on the earth. Allah's representative in this world sets the laws of the heavens upon the land. But today's people, like we said, they have become like Nimruds, saying Allah can have his laws in the sky and we will have our laws on the earth. We want to be the lords of the earth. We will make our own laws. We don't need his laws. We are very smart, we are very modern, we are very advanced, we are very civilized. Allah's laws are barbaric and old-fashioned, Hasha. Our laws, our theories, our philosophies, they are civilized. We will rule ourselves. This rebellion has brought disaster to mankind for more than 100 years. And that is why the world has sunk into endless problems. That is why since the veiling of the Khilafat, this world has been in endless wars. Never in history it happened that there was perpetual, endless war on the face of the earth. But we find that since World War I, there has not been a day of peace on the face of the earth. This is from the signs of Allah showing mankind, if you rule yourself, if you forget the laws of Allah, if you disobey the laws of Allah, this is the result. Holy Prophet والسلام, has shown us the way to escape from every problem. The shahadat to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa shadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, it is enough to fix our lives. The shahadat is not just words, the shahadat is guidance. And it guides us to the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and his companions. That lifestyle was known to us through the inheritors of the Holy Prophet والسلام, in an unbroken chain that connected us to the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Muslims lost the link to that chain, they lost everything. They lost their religion. Our Shaykh. Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi Rabbani Qadasallah Sir is saying, everybody, everyone is running and saying, I do as I like. Nobody is going to tell me anything. If you do as you like, then don't die. Why are you lying to yourself? If you do as you like, then don't get old. If you do as you like, then what do you have to fear from? Say, I am the ruler, just like Nimrud and Firaun, who's not saying it. Everyone's saying it. But as soon as something is happening, everyone is shivering. Wake up to yourselves. This is the month of Safar. Muslims, wake up to yourselves. It doesn't matter where you live, which nation you live. You are Muslims. You are believers. Everywhere, every land belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the believers are responsible to live according to their faith anywhere they are going. You cannot say, there's nothing here. There's no ruling of Islam. So I do as I like as the other ones. Where is your faith? Faith is gone. Today's Muslims, especially in the West, in the first world countries, they are using a new excuse to run from the obedience of Allah. They are saying, well, this is the West. This is non-Muslim land. 
So we cannot live like Muslims here. We have to conform. We have to adapt. We have to integrate. We have to assimilate. As Shaykh Fendi is saying, every land belongs to Allah. Yes, America and Europe also belong to Allah. And no matter where we are, we are Allah's servants. We are from the Ummati Muhammad والسلام, and we must live with that identity. Because the lifestyle that we live in this world, it is going to determine our eternity. As Shaykh Fendi is saying, the Holy Prophet والسلام, is saying to us, the way you believe, that's how you will live. The way you live, that's how you will die. The way you die, that's how you will be buried. The way you will be buried, that's how you will get up to the judgment day. Watch yourself. Look at yourself. Say to yourself, am I happy? Am I happy with this situation that I'm living in right now? Is it enough for me to get up for the judgment day like this? Ask yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Don't cheat yourself. You may cheat the whole world. Today's people are lying to the whole world, left and right. At least don't lie to yourself. Look at yourself. Look at your actions and say, do you like it? If you like it and you say that it's according to the life, according to Islam, then continue. Because that's how you are going to die. If you don't like it, then correct yourself. Don't delay it for tomorrow because Azrael is waiting for you tonight. Maybe your name is in that book. But the Muslim nation forgot about that also. They don't want to remember. And they don't want to be reminded by death. And Allah is reminding us. His Prophet والسلام, is reminding us. Saying to us, keep that alive. Keep yourself alive with that remembrance. Otherwise, you will forget about Ahirat. You will fall into the wrong ways of dunya. And you will be in trouble. You cannot come out from that mess later. So it is not enough to simply say we believe and think that we are going to be in safety. The belief needs to take root in our hearts and it needs to be shown in our lifestyle. We must constantly be asking ourselves and checking ourselves, do I still have faith in this moment? Do I still have my faith? And is my faith showing through how I live? Or am I hiding my faith with the way that I live? Because we are living in the most dangerous time when Muslims are losing their faith daily. We are living in the time that the Holy Prophet ﷺ warned us about saying, run to do good deeds before fitna come like patches of dark night when a man will wake up as a believer and by evening he will be an unbeliever or in the evening he will be a believer and by morning he will be an unbeliever selling his religion for some worldly gains we have no guarantee of our faith but we have a guarantee of death what is the hadith saying? People will sell their faith for the dunya. Dunya is not just wealth. Dunya is also saying to fit into society, we will change our faith. Allah will understand. Dunya is saying to have worldly power, we will erase the hadith that our enemies, they don't like. Dunya is saying to become modern, we must accept every evil and every wrong lifestyle we must not even say anything or think anything about them we cannot enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil yes and in that way the muslims are selling their faith left and right may allah protect us from that we have to be checking our faith the awliya allah are telling us how to do that our shaykh is telling us the believers are those ones that when their Lord is remembered next to them, their hearts start shivering. They put themselves back to the line again. 
And when their Prophet والسلام, is mentioned, love is coming to their hearts and that love makes them to move around to do things for the sake of their Lord. Are our hearts jumping to life for Allah and His Prophet? Or are we sleeping? Or are we absent? Is the love of Rasulullah the driving force in our lives? Or is it the love of our family, the love of our work, or the love of what others may think of us? That love, the love of Allah and His Prophet and what they think, is what made Islam spread from east to west. It is not just the spread of Islam from east to west. It is to bring down ignorance. It is bringing down tyranny from east to west. That love is what brought the civilization and peace of Islam all over the world. That love is what caused the Ottomans to establish the ruling of Allah with justice and peace all over the world. Does that move us? Or did our hearts become cold and dead when we hear those words? Or worse, do we start saying back in our hearts? Are we like the rest of the 21st century man who has become lazy and useless, sitting all day in front of the television, in front of the computer, in front of the phone, showing off to the whole world, sitting and not living, sitting and becoming Consumers, consuming media, consuming food, consuming entertainment, sitting and losing the dignity, becoming worse than animals. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Bismillah rahman rahim and we have certainly created for hell many of the jinn and mankind. They have hearts with which they do not understand. They have eyes with which they do not see and they have ears with which they do not hear they are like cattle rather they are more astray it is they who are the heedless sadaqallah azim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created us as bani adam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he honored us. We were not created to be useless. We were created to live and to die for Allah. We were created to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were created to reach to the heights of our humanity through the love of the Rasulullah wasalam. That's how we check our faith. If that is what is motivating us, then we have faith. We check our faith by asking ourselves, if I go to the grave this moment, will the window of my grave be open to paradise or to hell? When a man thinks like that, his worry becomes ahirat. His thoughts, his obsession becomes ahirat, not dunya. Because dunya cannot be the priority of the believer. The believer's priority is the next life. This is the dua of the Holy Prophet Ya Allah, do not let the dunya to be our biggest worry. Do not let it be the limit of our knowledge. And do not let it be the limit of our aspirations, of our hopes. Today's people believe that they have reached to the heights of knowledge and intelligence. But there is a test for intelligence too. The test for intelligence is, are you saying the shahadat? Are you believing in shahadat? Are you living the lifestyle of the shahadat? Are you preparing for your grave? That is the definition of intelligence given by Holy Prophet والسلام, who is saying the most intelligent person is the one who often remembers death. The intelligent one is that one who understands that to live shahadat, he must obey Allah. That to obey Allah, he must obey the Prophet. And to obey the Prophet, he must obey his rightly guided leaders. Without this intelligence, a man cannot be successful in Ahirat. It is impossible. 
Our Shaykh is saying that if a man does not obey his rightly guided leaders, if not, then you are a disobedient one. You are a disobedient one to the Quran Kareem. And then, not five times a day, you may pray 55 times a day. You may recite the Quran all day and all night long. They will ask you, have you been with the Salihin? That's what Allah is saying to us. Be with the Siddiqs, the Salihin, with the righteous people. Be with them. Have you been with them? Being with them is sitting and listening, asking, learning, moving. He is not saying to you, be one of them. He is saying to you, be with them. Being with them, slowly, one day maybe something will pass to you and you'll become one of them. If it's not, in the judgment day you will say, I was with this Salih, I was with this righteous one, I was with this Awliya, I was with this Shaykh. And Allah will put us together with those whom we love. That is the instruction for how to live a clean life and how to be acceptable in divine presence. But the ego of 21st century man says, I don't need to follow anyone. I don't need Salihin or Siddiqin or Awliya. I have myself. I can teach myself. I can read books. I can use my own intelligence. I can go straight to Allah. Those who are following, those who are with the Salihin and they are not learning from them, and they are not obeying them, are even worse condition. This, this is the ideology of shaitan. We are on the way of the Sahabi Kiram, the greatest humans after the prophets. And they never said, Allah said this and Allah said that. The Sahabis always said, Rasulullah said this and I heard it from him. This religion is not founded on books. Even the Kitabullah, the book of Allah, the Holy Quran, it is not a physical book. It is the uncreated speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is conveyed to us through His Rasul alayhi This religion is founded upon hearing and obeying. When we hear and obey, when our faith comes from Samitna wa ta'na, that time we have reached to Shahadat. These are the most dangerous times for our faith. But worse days there are ahead. We must guard it carefully. To guard it, we must be with those of real faith. We must be with those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. They have no fear. And they do not worry. We must stay with the friends of Allah. We must stay with the awliya Allah. And the awliya are telling us that the month that we're about to enter is very heavy. We must take care from it. Shaykh Afendi is saying, this is the month of Safar. During this month, at least, at least three times a day, Shahadat. And at least 500 times a day, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. If you cannot make it, then 300 times a day, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Today's people are very busy. They may say to me, 300 times is too much. Say 100 times at least. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah means sit somewhere for five minutes and understand that the things you did in heedlessness, in ghaflat, and ask forgiveness for those things. Regret from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, you were watching me and I was doing this heedless thing, Ya Rabbi. I'm asking forgiveness from you. That's what it means. We're asking our Lord to forgive us. We're asking him to accept our month of Muharram and to protect us in the month of Safar. We're asking to be in the company of those who are his beloved ones in the company of our Shaykh, inshaAllah. Amin. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim al-lazim. La ilaha illa wa al-hayl qayyum wa al-tibu lahi. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulka wa al-hamdi. Shain Qadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulka wa al-hamdi. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك رب الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك رب الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك رب الظالمين سبحانك رب القدس نبنا رب الملائكة وارض سبحانك رب القدس نبنا رب الملائكة سبحانك رب القدس نبنا رب الملائكة إن دينا عند الله الإسلام قاصر